Hey guys, it's Will and welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to talk GameCube. I recently made a video where I talked about my thoughts on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus and it was great to see so many comments and so much debate around is this device actually a GameCube device? Now, I said it wasn't quite there, it didn't run, but thanks to the comments, a number of people made suggestions on how things could be tweaked and how settings could improve something. Now, I actually used Tech Dweeb's guide to set up Dolphin MMJR and decided that I would thoroughly test out 21 games. Why these specific games? Well, these were the first 21 GameCube games that I originally bought when it was first released. Uh, I'm going to make it simple, I'm going to ask, answer each question, so does it run, am I happy playing this and would I be comfortable playing it for a long period of time through to completion? And the answer will be yes and no and then we'll have my final thoughts at the end. And the footage you can see here is all from Mario Kart. Now this runs absolutely great, absolutely perfect. I didn't have any issues with this game at all. Uh, I'm running it 4x3, 1x resolution, but that's just personal preference. And for me, this one I had no problems with, as you can see. It's still a fun game and nice surprise to be able to play this one on the Retro Pocket 3. So this one gets a pass. Next up, we've got Fantasy Star Online, episode one and two from Sega. Sadly, this one, I couldn't even get past the calendar screen. My assumption here is that the scaled back Dolphin MMJR just doesn't have networking capabilities and there's some sort of error. So Fantasy Star is a no-go, I'm afraid. Next up, we've got Super Mario Sunshine now. I'm a little torn as to where to actually put this one because it seems to run pretty well. There is an issue, and I don't know if anybody knows how to fix this with a black box that regularly flashes. So it's definitely not perfect. Uh, and there's another obvious deal breaker, which is the fact that we don't have analog triggers on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. So therefore you can't move and fire your water cannon at the same time, which is a bit game breaking. So, Torn as to whether to say this is good or bad, I, personally I think that there probably are settings that can fix that and can make this playable. You can see here from the footage it's running very very smoothly so I'm going to give this one a pass. I'm going to say Super Mario Sunshine is playable and ran pretty well. Zelda Wind Waker next, and this one is such a great game to see on the go. It runs really, really smoothly, completely locked frame rate. Uh, I, I saw absolutely zero issues whatsoever and cannot fault this one. So Zelda Wind Waker is a straight tick in the box for me. So Enter the Matrix may not be the best game in the world. I picked this one up and I absolutely loved it. Played it through to completion when I was younger. Uh, and the good news is it seems to run pretty well here. I didn't have any issues. I played for about an hour overall. Zero problems my end. So again, this is another good story for the GameCube on the Retro Pocket 3. One of my favorite GameCube games and actually favorite racing games of all time is F-Zero GX. And you can see here, it looks fantastic, it runs, but it's running at about two thirds speed. Now, F-Zero GX was so fast, it, it doesn't look too bad anyway, but it's not playable, unfortunately. Some people have said they've managed to get things it running, so I'd be really keen to understand how people have managed to do that. But for me, it's, it's sadly a no. Mario Party 4, this was a really nostalgic game for me, brought back a ton of memories. And the good news here is I didn't see any problems with this whatsoever. Even on games where you were button mashing and there was the potential for lag, there were absolutely no problems here. You can see from the footage, no graphical errors. Mario Party 4 works flawlessly. 
Which brings me on to Rayman 3. Now, this is a game that I actually think is really, really underrated. Uh, Rayman 2, obviously, is regarded as a fantastic platformer. And Rayman 3, I think people just saw it as more of the same. Now, if you like more of the same, it's a good thing. Uh, and the good news here is I didn't have any problems with playing this on the Retro Pocket. It looked great. I'm actually tempted to go back and play a lot more of this one again because... I didn't really play it through to completion originally, so this may be a game that I revisit. Uh, good news is, no problems here at all. Metroid Prime, to me, is one of the defining games on the GameCube, and the good news here is it plays great. There's a few moments of slowdown, some slowdown in the cutscenes, etc., but nothing that really stops the experience. So if you wanted to play this, I think that you would have a good time. I was certainly comfortable playing it for a couple of hours, no issues. And if it wasn't for the fact that the remaster I've just picked up on Switch, I'd have no problems uh, with going back and reliving this. A great way to have this on the go. So Metro Prime, Prime I'm gonna give this one a pass as well. The original Super Monkey Ball on the Nintendo GameCube uh, ranks as one of my favorite games of all time. It just, the GameCube controller with its gate system made this the absolute perfect way to play this and reach some really, really, really difficult levels. Now, this runs perfectly, you can see here. The issue is obviously with the controller, you're gonna get this on any handheld device where it doesn't match the GameCube's gate system, so it's not as easy to play, but I'm giving this one a tick. It was great fun. A great game that I really enjoyed and made me feel like I was playing a real life Fast and the Furious was Need for Speed Underground. And sadly, as you can see from the footage, it looks really, really smart on the screen. Um, it's hard to believe that this was achieved on a GameCube, to be honest, but it's just not running fast enough. It's running around half speed. Um, it's still playable, but, but I don't think that you can play this. So sadly, this is gonna be a cross. So Extreme G3 is a strange game for me. It was a game that I got bundled with the GameCube as like an extra pick from these games. Um, and it looked pretty good on paper. You can see here, it runs great. The problem I have with this is it's just not a great game. It just feels really bland. I remember the N64 original just being really exciting edge of your seat. And this one just doesn't have that same gravitas and pull, but I guess that's not what we're doing here. Is it running? And yes, this is fully, fully playable and looks really, really good with barely any frame drops. So I'm not seeing any graphical issues ever, e either here. So Extreme G3 is another tick in the box. So Time Splitters Future Perfect when I just played Halo on the Xbox, to be able to have a co-op shooter game on the GameCube was a lot of fun. And this one seriously delivered. It was a great game. As you can see here, it's running, but it's really, really slow, really poor frame rate, and it's just not working. So if you want your time splitters fix, this is not gonna be the machine to deliver that. Star Fox Adventures to me is a massively underrated game. I don't know what people's problem was with it. I personally loved it. It was one of the most beautiful games on the GameCube. You can see here there's the occasional graphical glitch. There's the occasional moment where things seem to light up and flicker. But overall, this is, you know, is it playable or not playable? This is playable. I mean, you can see the flicker cat could get a bit frustrating after a while, after a lengthy play session. Uh, there's also some issues with the flight sessions where uh, the graphics basically rent, don't render correctly, but the game, you can get through it if you want to. So it's on the cusp, uh, but for me to be able to see this on the go on a device like a retro pocket is fantastic. And I'd be happy playing this a bit more. The Resident Evil remake on the GameCube still looks absolutely gorgeous. The pre-rendered visuals were incredible. And it's scary to think actually this was only six years after the original, the visual upgrade that you see when you look at remasters now 20 years later that, that don't have the same, uh, same development. So this runs really, really well, looks great. So if you want to play Resident Evil, 
this is a perfectly good way to do it. I'm really glad the Zelda Twilight Princess on the GameCube exists. I think it would be disappointing to only have the motion controlled Wii version. Uh, and this was the way the game was originally designed. And thankfully, as you can see here, it runs really, really nicely. A few moments of slowdown, but now you can take Zelda Twilight Princess on the go and it looks fantastic. So this is another really, really positive surprise for me. Zelda Twilight Princess working beautifully. So Sonic Heroes was the first mainline Sonic game to be released not on a Sega platform. And I originally bought the PS2 version and guess what? It ran like crap. It looked nothing compared to the PS2, uh, sorry, compared to the GameCube and Xbox versions. Now, I wasn't expecting much from this just because of the scope and speed of the game, but actually it's... It's pretty playable, to be honest. Uh, I think my problems are more with the game itself than actually how it runs. You can see here, it's running no real problems at all, very, very minimal graphical glitches. So again, this one is another one that, that you can definitely enjoy on the Retro Pocket 3. So next up was Prince of Persia Sands of Time. Now I played this originally on the PC. Uh, now I had a 2003 uh, Windows PC back then, and guess what? It ran this like butter with high resolution. So when I first tried this out, it looked pretty awful and the performance wasn't great, but seemed to be saying that it was running at 100%. So I wasn't sure if the frame counter was wrong. So I actually found my GameCube version of this game and I uh, put it in an original GameCube and guess what? The GameCube version didn't run great in the first place. So this one, I'd say play any version but this, but if you want to relive and have nostalgia around the GameCube version, then this one works. This is good. So yeah, another tick in the box. So the, the sixth generation of consoles was a golden era for tennis games with Virtua Tennis coming onto the scene and Mario Tennis uh, for the less realistic version of the sport. It's still an amazing game and I was surprised with just how well this ran. If you've ever played um, the N64 version emulated, still to this day it can cause problems and have slowdown and graphical errors, but this ran absolutely perfectly. I'm definitely going to go back for more and play a lot more of this. So Mario Tennis on the GameCube, working beautifully. So 13 is uh, was just such a cool shooter back in the day. Amazing cell shaded graphics which actually help hold up really really well uh, and i was really happy to see this one just working really really nicely uh, this is another one that i may go back to i was really disappointed a couple of years ago when the remaster was absolutely terrible so it's really really good to see this one working uh, and yeah it seems to be all good news stories for the gamecube at the moment which brings me to my 21st game and Resident Evil 4, another defining game for the GameCube. And as you can see here, excuse my uh, my shoddy aiming, but this runs really, really nicely. Uh, I definitely think that there could be areas where the performance struggles. You certainly see a few frame dips, so might have to slightly reserve judgment, but from what you can see so far, uh, this is more than playable and a great way to experience one of the GameCube's finest games. So, in conclusion, I think, interestingly, despite being hugely surprised by how well so many games have run, my conclusion actually is the same as the video in that would I buy this device solely as a GameCube device? No, I would buy it for the other reasons. Uh, I still love it, I'm still playing it all the time and see the GameCube really as just a very, very pleasant surprise and a great extra if the games that you want to play work. And I think in terms of do they work, Yes, you know, this isn't just a few games here. These are the key defining games on the system. Games like Metro Prime, the Zelda games, Mario games, they're all there and they're all working. So is this gonna be the definitive experience? No, um, but things are certainly a lot better than in my original first impressions uh, video that I made. So definitely check out Tech Dweebs, uh, configuration setup. I'll leave a link to that in the description. 
Thanks, obviously, for watching the video and like and subscribe because, as I've always said, I want to do a lot more of these. Have a great day.